All right, so the first thing we're going to do is create the would not shape. And I'm going to place that in its own kind of subgraph, so another utility graph. Let's come up here to our package and we'll right click and choose new substance graph. Uh, the template, I'm just going to keep this set to empty. And for the name here, I'll just call this wood uh, knots and size mode relative to parent. So we'll click OK. While we are here at this root level, I want to make sure that I come over here to my out attributes, output computation, and set that to no. Now, again, the reason I'm doing that is because uh, this is just a utility graph that's going to be instanced in this main graph. And in the case of using this in an integration, I don't want these utility graphs to be thought of as materials. All right, so we have our wood knots. Uh, let's start by just creating our basic shape. So I'm going to use the shape node. And I'm going to set this pattern here to thorn. So let's zoom in here on this. And uh, now we'll just do a uh, transform of this. Actually, I think what I could maybe do is just start to kind of, uh, instead of just using a transform node itself, uh, I can just adjust it this way. So let me try setting this to 0.13 and uh, maybe uh, decrease or increase here my X, something like this. And then I can rotate this uh, value here. So now this is, like I said, my shape. Uh, here at the parent size resolution, I'm going to set this to a working resolution of 1024. Okay, so uh, now I have this shape, and what I'd like to do is uh, just kind of scatter this around. So to do that, I'm going to use the splatter node. And so let's connect this guy up, and let's come here to the grid number. I'm going to switch this to a value of 2. Uh, then I'm going to start to work with my disorder. So let's set this to something like maybe 245. Uh, then let's change the disorder angle. Uh, here I can enable uh, this disorder random to true. And then we'll go back and just kind of play around with this disorder angle here. Uh, let's see, disorder. Just keep playing around with some of these settings. Uh, also, I'm going to just increase my rotation here uh, and then the rotation variation. Uh, so we'll get something like this. And then again, just kind of playing around with this disorder angle until I find you know, a distribution that I like. Uh, let's also uh, just increase this uh, size variation uh, a bit here. Uh, something like around 70. Uh, well, no, maybe that's too extreme. Let's do something around maybe 46. All right, so I think this will work for me. Uh, the next thing I'd like to do is just kind of process some of these uh, grayscale values. So I'm going to run a levels uh, and then just come into here, do a gamma adjustment, uh, kind of work here with my input black and white. So we'll get something like this. And you can see this produces for me like uh, more of like an egg shape here. So this is what uh, I want to use for kind of the basis of uh, these knots. All right, so the next thing I want to do is uh, start to add some more detail. And we're going to add uh, some of these kind of wood age rings. So to do this, I'm going to use uh, a gradient dynamic. Now, this node is similar to what you can uh, what you can produce with a gradient. However, you'll notice that I don't have an option to set keys. The keys are set dynamically based on uh, this gradient input. So we're going to start here by taking our levels, and we're going to use this as the grayscale input. And now we need to feed into this guy some type of gradient. So I'm going to come over here to my search window, and I'm going to choose this gradient linear 1. And I'll plug this guy into here. And I'm going to set a tiling value of around 4. And so you can see with this rotation 0, by setting the uh, tiling to 4, we start to get this repeating gradient pattern uh, that's you know running vertically here. So if we come back here to our gradient dynamic, you'll notice, well, nothing has happened. And that's because of this gradient orientation. Notice that by default it's set to horizontal, and this gradient input position is 0. This is talking about the pixel coordinate where we are going to start this sample from. So with this set to horizontal and a gradient input position of 0, here's what we're sampling. So at 0, we're looking right here at this very first pixel at this 0, 0 origin, at this, which is the top left here in Designer. And since we told the orientation to be horizontal, we're just now scanning from this pixel here from left to right, just uh, horizontally, and you can see that it's just this constant grayscale value the, the entire way, all the way to the other side of the image. And that's why we see this is just pure gray. So what we want to do is switch this from horizontal to vertical. And when we do that, now we start to see that uh, we are being able to plot uh, dynamic keys based on this input map. 
So again, that was set at a value of zero for the position. So we're looking at this uh, zero, zero pixel here and vertical. So now we're moving from this gray down this column of pixels, this first column of pixels. And it goes from like gray to black. And then it starts here at white, gray, black. And then it just keeps repeating down this entire column of pixels. Uh, now, you'll also notice that uh, I can redistribute these values just by changing the tiling amount. So, for example, if I set this to 5, you can see that, well, it changes, and now we have this white background. And that's because, again, if we now look, this first pixel is, is white, whereas underneath, uh, or is with a value of 4, you can see that it was gray. And so that's how that's changing our background. So I'm going to leave it set to 4, and this is giving me kind of the ring count that I really want to work with. So here we have just our basic uh, kind of shape here for these uh, wood knots. Now the process becomes we want to start to vary and break up this shape. And so to do that, I'm going to introduce a wood pattern. Luckily, we already have a wood pattern that we've created in previous videos, which is here. So I'm just going to instance uh, this subgraph here into my wood knot graph. And we're going to use uh, this uh, wood pattern here. So I want to you know, start to break this guy up. So to do that, I'm going to run a transform node here. And I'm going to rotate this so I can just kind of uh, snap this rotation by holding down the Shift key, left click and drag, and just snap that kind of horizontally, as you see here. And then we'll come over to the uh, underneath the stretch category, and I'll just click this Divide button to uh, zoom out uh, or scale down this image. OK. Now I want to combine uh, these two results, so we'll use a blend to do that. And we'll take our wood pattern in the foreground, the transform in the background, and then we're going to set the blending mode here to subtract. And so now we have you know, kind of this uh, broken pattern. And then I can adjust my opacity here to kind of feather this back a bit. So uh, we'll, we'll start to play around with this here uh, again after we have integrated this shape. All right, so now uh, what I'm going to do is use this, uh, this shape here, and I'm going to multiply this new pattern uh, uh, you know, against this shape. So now we'll use a blend node. Let's take this levels effect and put it into the foreground, and let's take this blend into the background. And then here, what we're going to do is switch the blending mode to multiply. Uh, so now you can see that we're starting to kind of break, break up this uh, kind of pill or egg shape uh, based on that wood pattern. So now I kind of want to adjust these uh, value ranges. So I'm going to uh, run a levels here and just simply come over to the gamma and just make a little gamma adjustment here. And so now you'll see if I go back to this blend and start to adjust this opacity, I can you know kind of break this shape up a bit more. And I think for this, I'm going to leave it at a, a fairly lower value, maybe around something like uh, 0.26. All right, so now that we have that in place, what I want to do is take uh, this shape and uh, kind of composite it together with this shape. And to do that, of course, we're going to use the Blend node. And we'll take the gradient uh, into the foreground and the levels here into the background. And then we will switch this blending mode here to Multiply. Now we have this ring effect that's kind of broken up a bit here uh, by that wood pattern. So now I'd like to add a little bit more detail to this. So we're going to add some cracks. So to do that, we'll hit the space bar. And I'm going to do a search here for grunge. I'm going to use this grunge map 11. So here's grunge map 11. Uh, I'm going to decrease this crack slider, which uh, actually has the effect of increasing the cracks. And then I'll just make an adjustment here to my balance. So we have something like this here. Then I will add a transform and plug this guy in. Uh, we'll hit divided by 2 on this. And then again, I want to just flip this to be more uh, horizontal. So quick way to do that, hold down the Shift, left click, drag to snap it horizontally. Then I'm going to composite the result uh, of this uh, grunge in the foreground and the transform in the background. And then again, here we'll just do a multiply. So now we're, we're kind of breaking this up here. And then maybe what I'll do is just uh, mess around here with the uh, balance again. So let's just increase this, something like that. OK, so now what I'm going to do is add another blend, because we want to take these cracks and we want to integrate that into the result of our uh, what we had previously. So let's place the cracks in the foreground and this, the result of this blend here in the background. And then we're just going to do another multiply. So now we have these cracks here. And uh, maybe one of the things I'm going to do here is go into my transform. I'm just going to play around with maybe scaling this grunge map as well. 
So let's look at the result here of uh, the, the, the complete composited operation. And then let's just single click this transform here. And I'm going to hit uh, divided by two to scale it back. And I think that's uh, more in line of what I want to create here. Now, one last thing I'm going to do here at the very end, another levels operation to kind of lift my gamma. So let's go into the gamma and just lift this guy up. So now you can see that this is kind of the knot pattern that we've created here. We've got our uh, age uh, rings, and then we've got uh, you know the wood pattern in here, and then we have some cracks as well. So we're going to use this uh, when we actually integrate this effect into our uh, wood planks age. That's our main graph. So the first thing I'm going to need here is an output. So let's just hit the space bar, and I'm going to do a search for output and grab an output node. And I'll take the levels and just plug it into here. Now, for the usage, uh, I really don't care about the usage because I'm not. this isn't going to output as a material. And so this is really an integration attribute. So usage, I'm going to leave it blank. Since this is kind of uh, what I'm using as a height, uh, you could come into your add item and search in here and, and choose height for this guy here. So we could do this. The only problem that, that you get with something like this is um, when you're using these different material and compact material modes. So sometimes you may notice that when you're in compact material mode, and you have like an output and you try to connect it to an input of another node, sometimes it may not let you make that connection. And that's because if you're in compact material mode, designers trying to, well, look at these nodes as material items. So to do that, designer looks at this usage setting here. And if the usages don't match or it doesn't work or it doesn't connect as, as, as if it was a material, uh, it won't let you make the connection. So what you'll have to do then is just hit one on the keyboard, which uh, takes you here to the standard mode, make the connection, and then hit three to go back to, uh, which would be compact material. So to get around that, when I'm creating my own graphs like this, I just will leave this usage blank. And designer will then not try to, um, it won't try to like force some type of connection, uh, even though you may be in material or a compact material mode. So I'll kind of leave it like this. Now here for the identifier, uh, what I'll do is I will set uh, a value for this uh, because you know the more outputs I do, like here in just a moment, we're going to create another output. And you'll see that when I do that, you, it just gives you output underscore one and then output underscore two. And I don't like seeing a bunch of, of these just underscore one, two, three, and so on in my um, outputs, as you can see here. So it's wood knots, and you see this. Uh, it's not very user friendly here from this uh, standpoint. So what I'll do is just make up my own identifier. In this case, I'm just going to call it uh, knots. Doesn't matter because I'm not trying to use this. I'm not trying to have designer automatically hook this into a specific shade or channel. I'm going to use it in my own way. Uh, for the label, uh, I always create like a user-friendly label so I'll know what this output is once I instance it. So we'll, we'll do this here. And then now we have this output as well. Uh, like I said, we're going to use uh, this output for a mask because we're going to do some compositing with this uh, knot shape in our wood planks age. So it's great to always have a mask for this. So here, again, like I said, leave the usage blank for the label. I'm just going to call it mask. And then here for the identifier, I'll come in here and call it mask. So now we need to, well, make a mask. We already have it, and so what I'm going to use way over here is the splatter node. I'm going to use this kind of more soft, kind of feathered um, representation here of these knot shapes as the mask. So what I can do now is just take the result of the splatter here, and I'm just going to just connect it here to my output. And as soon as I give that a value, you'll notice here that that uh, output, uh, that identifier name here changed. Um, and one other thing, uh, just for the re readability of this, we have this connection line just running right through everything. So just to kind of clean this up, I can hold down the Shift and Alt key, and that gives me these little yellow points, and I can just left-click and drag out uh, to reorder this connection line. So maybe what I'll do is something like, um, like this here. And so it just kind of helps with the overall kind of re readability of where these uh, connection lines are linking to. So I'll just do something like that. And now you can see it's very, very clear that, OK, this output is going to here. The output of the splatter is going into this output node, which is a mask. All right, so this is going to take care of the actual wood knot shape. So now what we want to do is go, to, is go into the process of integrating that here into our wood planks aged graph.